Hello, welcome to the Capital OTB. and a confrontation of champions as they come toward the top of the stretch. And they're into the stretch! And here we go! Songbird set down! Beholder is alongside! The seven-year wait is over! American Pharaoh It's finally the one! American Pharaoh has won! He's just perfect! And now, he's just immortal! Here's the Takes preview, Sully Crowdy, Mike Callahan for the weekend of September 7th. Mike, how you doing? What's going on, Sully? Hard to believe uh, Saratoga's <laughs> already over, but where you would think there'd be a little bit of a lull, there really isn't, because we were mm -hmm. taking a look at this weekend's stakes, and there are some good horses running, uh, some exciting races. We're going to talk about some down at Kentucky Downs, which is always fun. It's a short meet, but a fun meet, and I know a lot of betters like that. And then obviously uh, Belmont with the new series that they have for three-year-olds and that... Uh, Turf Trinity and the uh, uh, the other one for Phillies there, which is uh, shaped up to be great because there's a lot of Euros coming over. Yeah, it, it's a great weekend at Belmont. Um, obviously, a lot of people like to take a week off from Saratoga, but it's kind of hard with these type of cards here. As you said, the Turf Triple, the Turf Tierra happening, the final leg down at Belmont, and then Kentucky Downs, a really nice 10 race card. But looking at five stakes races as we always do, we'll look at two at Kentucky Downs, three at Belmont Park, the first of two at Kentucky Downs is race nine Saturday afternoon. This is the Farm Lady Sprint Grade Three event, six and a half furlongs on their unique turf course, and then the tenth race at Kentucky Downs. This is the Calumet Farm Kentucky Turf Cup Grade Three event, a million dollars on the line there at Kentucky Downs, and then we'll go to Belmont Park. Three at Belmont Park, race number eight. Uh, this is the American Jockey Club Invitational, a mile and a half on the main track race number nine at belmont this is the jockey club oaks invitational a mile and three eighths on the inner turf course and then we'll take a look at race number 10 race 10 at belmont park this is the jockey club derby a mile and a half a million dollars on the line there and it, it is a field of nine well, let's go back and take a look at that opener as far as our stakes preview goes it's going to be the Lady Sprint in here. It's a grade three event, as Sully alluded to. The morning line favorite, slight morning line favorite, is Ostralanka coming off that very impressive win up at Saratoga, sprinting five and a half, now going to stretch out to six and a half here. Got a solid buyer. I think the deserved favorite in here, but there are so many options. Again, Kentucky Downs, such big, deep fields in here. A lot of horses coming in from different ways, shortening up, uh, cutting back. Some horses are stretching out from sprinting five and a half. The six and a half distance it's going to be tough for a lot of them in here. What were your thoughts ultimately? Yeah, I, I don't really want to go with the chalk in here, especially because it is Kentucky Downs, and very rarely does the favorites win. But I went with the two logicals, 3, 7, 8, and 11. Oleksandr on top for me. I just thought the effort the last four or five have been very, very good for this uh, for this mare. Last time out, beat a very good field at, in the Smart and Fancy. That was, They were going quick and kind of set the race up for her. And there's a lot of speed in here. So I think the stretch to six is not going to be an issue. Uh, the horses ran well going six furlongs at Woodbine in a grade two event, losing a summer Sunday. Beat a nice horse in Vicky. Uh, a couple starts back as well at Belmont. So I, I don't want to go to three to one price, but I just think this horse is in too good a form not to use. Uh, Morticia is another one in here that ran very well on the front end. And just for a speed factor, I want to use defensively. Uh, it is a sprint race. There's a lot of speed in here, and it's very tough to win on the front end at Kentucky Downs. But Morticia is a horse that has ran well in some graded stakes races, ran well at Kentucky Downs last fall. Uh, and his race against a little bit better earlier on in the career. Uh, the eight and the eleven for me underneath. I think eight to one, or excuse me, ten to one on Cool Beans is more than fair. Um, cool Beans is a horse that in a great three event at Keeneland. I just keep thinking of Cool Beans, kind of forcing um, Daddy's a legend over the fence there, but still ran a very nice third by a half a length. Uh, has ran well since then, ran third in a grade two event at Churchill going the route distance, but I've always been a fan of horses that have shown good speed uh, and, and good races from a stalking role at, at route distance. Just cutting back, I think they'll be even better. Um, so for me, I think 10 to 1's a steal with cool beans. But And then 9 to Kentucky Downs, 3, 7, 8, and 11. Yeah, I do like Australanka in here. But to me, the price is going to be too short in here. I went with a little bit of a price. I'm 
I'm hoping it's going to hold in here. I want one, three, eight, ten in here. Ravens Lady's interesting because you take a look at that Euro form. The horse came over uh, with some solid European form, including a Group Two victory uh, back in August of last year. Then you take a look at the North American debut at Santa Anita. It wasn't bad. It was a fourth place finish to who? Vasilica, who we just saw come back and win on Saturday against Toinette and also Juliet Foxtrot. And Vasilica's just been unbelievable. One of the best claiming uh, horses to ever go on to win multiple Group Ones uh, or Grade Ones over here in America. So I think that was a good fourth place finish. Then there were a couple that were so so efforts, but look at the competition this horse faced. Got Stormy, who we saw. Uh, and are going to see up at Woodbine, but we saw it dominate at Saratoga. Daddy is a legend. We also saw significant form uh, as well up, at, up here at Saratoga when a stakes on Travers Day. So the horse didn't really run that well against those horses, but those are significantly better horses than what this horse is going to see on Saturday. Had a little bit of a time off, then raced in an optional claim at Gulfstream Park and mowed them down and went going away. That was at the 7.5, shortening up to 6.5. I don't have any concerns at all, and you take a look at that workout on August 31st, 1st of 22, 46 and 3, I think there's going to be a lot of speed up front between the 5, 7, and 8 in here, and I think it could set it up for a big price with Julian LaPeru aboard. I use the number one Ravens Lady on top underneath Australanka. You and I both like the horse. It just really comes down to the price in here because if you get to that 9 to 5 range with all the other horses you can use in here, Maybe there's a little bit of an undervalue with uh, Ostrolink in here, but you have to like that performance last time out in the Smart and Fancy. And then Cool Beans, like you said. Cool Beans is a horse, and, and thank you for bringing that up. I actually had Cool yeah, Beans in too. that. Uh, I was at the race. Uh, in the, I had a bankroll. A yeah. bankroll at the Clubhouse Racebook that day with Cool Beans on top, and uh, ultimately he ended up getting in trouble that day. Daddy's Legend got in real trouble as well, so it was unfortunate. But Cool Beans is just a hard-knocking horse each and every time. The only question is... He likes to go the mile, mile and the 16th distance, and he has speed doing that in route distances. Now cutting back, I don't think he's going to be uh, on the lead at all. I think the five and seven are much faster because those are horses that actually sprint on the turf going five and a half. So we'll see how this route speed ends up for Cool Beans. He's a horse that normally likes to get the lead. I just don't think that's going to happen on Saturday. But nonetheless, he's still a player, especially with Florent Giroux. And if that 10 to 1 holds, I do agree with you. Uh, he's a value play in here as well. So for me, 1, 3, 8, 10. Your thoughts one more time? 3, 7, 8, 11. All right, let's take a look at race number 10 at Keenly, or Kentucky Downs on Saturday. It's going to be the Kentucky Turf Cup, another grade 3 event, another one with a really deep field in here. You're going to see 14 with the also eligibles probably scratched down. To about 12 realistically in this spot based on you know, we'll see how it goes with weather and whatnot but uh, Arklo is going to be the morning line favorite the number 10 in here going out for Brad Cox Florence Rue aboard a horse that's been really unlucky not to win the last couple he's second beaten a neck second beaten a neck and third beaten a half length last time in the Bowling Green against Channel Cat and you remember that day there was no speed at all Channel Cat was able to take him wire to wire that was against your Primo who we saw come back in the sword dancer Arklo was trying to look for room late ultimately ran out of ground that day I thought it was a good performance he is a deserved favorite in here I think stone cold 100% he deserves to be the favorite in here the problem is he sort of keeps running out of chances he's sort of like uh, one of those sort of Tacitus is on and I'm not comparing those two horses but just the way that Tacitus always seems to run second and always be there. You always seem to believe that Arco is going to be able to win again, but he just isn't able to get there. So it's going to be an interesting race. Yeah, it is. Um, I had Arco uh, in my mix, uh, but I went 9, 11, 10, and 5. Uh, I've always been a fan of Zulu Alpha. I didn't think it was a bad effort in the Bowling Green. Obviously, I'd like to see a little bit better of a ride. If you see the, if you watch the replay, the horse was wide, ducked into the rail, had to go wide again, and, and kind of ran out of racetrack there and came in fifth by a length running a 101 buyer. I think that repeat of a 101 buyer, 102 buyer, Zulu Alpha is going to be a horse that's very, very tough to beat. Losing by a neck to Hunter O'Reilly at a big price in the United Nations at Monmouth. I'll take 9-2 to two all day, and you like to see Jose Ortiz in town to ride. Um, the number 11 is Campaign. Campaign's a horse that's a stone-cold closer in here. It's 2-for-2 two two over the surface uh, and just consistently runs good races. Uh, I think going back to the turf course where the horse has had success, especially here at Kentucky Downs, uh, is good enough to take a shot in here. Sometimes the horse for the course angle does work out at, at uh, places like Kentucky Downs. 
Uh, campaign's a horse that's either most likely going to win or not run in the money, and that's usually what you, you see from him, but I'm going to use in the second spot. Uh, and then the 10 and the 5. I'll talk about the 5, bigger picture. I think the 8-1 to price is more than fair for the Mike Maker runner. Ran well in the Elkhorn, the winner of the Elkhorn beating Red Knight, who was the favorite in the, in the, in the Jockey Gold Cup uh, at Belmont or the Belmont Gold Cup, excuse me, and then the United Nations ran a really nice fourth that day behind Zulu Alpha, Channel Cat, and Hunter O'Reilly. So the United Nations is turning out to be a very, very good race because Channel Cat came back and won the Bowling Green and ran well enough, I thought, in the Sword Dancer. I think 8-1 to is fair on bigger picture. Uh, but Arclo, as you said, deserving favorite in here. A little short for me to take in this competitive field I'll use in the third spot. But um, in the Turf Cup at Kentucky Downs, I went 9 11, 10, 5. I did go 10, 9, 5, and 2 in here. And while a lot of people may say Arklo, not for me, just seems to not be able to get the job done, he's the defending champ of this race, so he likes Kentucky Downs. And he looks to get a favorable setup in here. And you know that the connections want to win very, very badly, especially off those three really close trips last time out. And that's really what it's going to come down to. It seems like Zulu Alpha, Arklo, Campaign, uh, a couple other horses in here, bigger pitcher, they all like to come from the back. So it's really going to come down to the trip and the setup that they get because uh, ultimately they all have the same running style in here. There is enough speed in here to set it up for these type of horses because you would say, well, I guess the serious contenders in here, they all like to come from the back of the pack. Who are the horses that are going to be on the lead? And it seems to be Factor This and also Hello Don Julio, Julio that are going to be the horses that are forwardly placed in here, maybe Botswana the one as well. Uh, who are going to set up enough pace in here to set it up for these closures. So I do like Arklo. I'm hoping the 5-2 to two holds. Maybe he's a little bit of an overlay. Maybe he goes off 7-2 to two in here because people are searching for other alternatives in here at the short price. The 9 in the second spot, your top choice, Zulu Alpha. I think he looks really good in here. I like that work on a September 1st uh, over the Churchill Downs training track, 58-3, first to 5. He did have a nice performance last time out. Again, it's a flattered 5th place performance because Channel Cat set such a slow pace that day that anybody who was closing into it really was up against it. So to only lose by a length, I think Zula Alpha is a major player in here at 92. And then Bigger Pitcher is another horse you have in the mix as well. Uh, and coming off that 97 buyer, he's a horse that does need to take a slight step forward, but he's been training well into it. And again, that fourth place finish last time in the United Nations I thought was pretty good. Uh, and he just needs to take a little bit of a step forward to be able to become a win candidate for me. That's why I had him in the third, uh, third spot, but ultimately there is some value there at eight to one on the morning line. So for me, in the Kentucky Turf Cup, I had it 10, nine, five, and two. Your thoughts one more time? Nine, 11, 10, and three. All right, let's take a look and round it out at Kentucky Downs. I'm gonna actually round it out for us at Kentucky Downs as we are going to take a break right now and go, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the big ones at Belmont. So stick with us. Welcome back to the Capital TV Stakes Preview. Mike Callahan, Sully Crotty on this Saturday edition of the Stakes Preview post Saratoga as we jump into Belmont Park. It's uh, kind of crazy to think that Belmont Park is back. Mm -hmm. but we're going to take a look at a big weekend for them as they have three stakes races we're going to go over, including race number eight on Saturday, which is the Grand Prix American Jockey Club uh, Invitational. There's going to be a field in here. Of eight, there's going to be the morning line favorite, slight morning line favorite of Marconi, along with Rocketry as well, taking uh, a lot of money in here. Those look to be the two main players as far as the betting windows go in here. I actually took a stand with some prices in here. I don't know where you ultimately ended up in this spot, but it looks to be quite competitive going the mile and a half distance. I went five, eight, seven, and one, and, and clearly you, you had to beat Rocketry and Marconi. I'll give a pass in the Birdstone because of how good these two look going a mile and a half at Belmont in the Brooklyn, but the five Highlands guy I think is coming into great form. Uh, the Belmont Gold Cup ran really nice going two miles. I think the mile and a half is perfect, and now that this horse is um, had some experience on a wet surface on the dirt. I'll take a shot at eight to one in here. A horse that's going to be coming from way off the pace. My Marconi is going to set the pace. Roaming Union is going to probably go out to the lead, stretching out this, to this distance for the first time. I just think the pace sets up perfectly for Highland Sky and. Um, 
for Barkley Tag and Manny Franco, who looks to get going. Did not have a great Saratoga meet. I just think the pace is going to set up perfectly for here. Eight to one, more than fair. Uh, Marconi and Rocketry. I use Rocketry in the second spot. I've always been a fan of Rocketry, and I've always said the longer the better. But I thought this horse had all the chances in the world in the flat out to get by, the Brooklyn to get by, and just never has. So I'm going to use in the second spot. And then Marconi is going to be that pace setter in here. Um, and if this horse repeats of the Birdstone or of the Brooklyn Invitational, I just think it's going to be very tough to catch on the front end. But for me, I went 5, 8, 7, and 1. I do like Island Sky. I landed right in the same horse as you. 8 to 1. I'm, I, I, if you and I agree, probably not going to get that. Probably somewhere around 4 to 1. But even so, I do think he's a nice value play. A horse that just seemed to level out on the turf. He was racing against good competition. And then the race ended up coming off the turf last time out. They decided to take a shot. And uh, Barkley got a lot out of that race because the horse was dominant that day against some good horses. Now, albeit, those were a lot of turf horses in there just trying the dirt because they were going for the purse money in that situation. But nonetheless, they're going to try it in here. And this is a horse, if he could just improve slightly in this spot, he's going to be a big player in here. So I do like Highland Sky, 8-1 uh, to one on the morning line. Underneath, Carlino. Now, Carlino's a horse I've always liked. and He just seems to not be able to put it together. But if he's able to run back to any of those late, the 2018 races, including that two other then where he was able to get the job done against Super Tappet. That was going to mile and eight distance. And then he was able to finish a good fourth in the Jockey Club Gold Cup uh, against Discreet Lover, Thunderstone, and Mendelssohn. And those are some big players. That fourth was really good. Got a 97 buyer. Now, going into 2019, I think there was a lot of high hopes, but he just hasn't been able to put together. But all he needs to do is take one step forward in this spot. 10 to 1, you get Louise Size in here, and he's stretching out to a distance that I think is going to hit him square in the eyes at this mile and a half distance. So he's one that I definitely want to use in here, and I'll be using it all of my Maltese, and that's Carlino, the number six. And then the seven and the eight, the horses that are going to take a lot of money, Mar uh, Marconi and, and Rock Rocketry, those horses are deserved favorites in this spot, but I just thought there was a little bit more upside with Highland Sky and Carlino, and I think you're going to get much better value with those horses. So I'll use all four in my pick four. But, again, as far as win candidates go for me, as far as a win bet, I like the five and the six in the spot. So, for me, I had a five, six, seven, and eight. Your thoughts one more time? Five, eight, seven, one. All right. Let's take a look at race number nine on Saturday. It's going to be that Turf Tierra division, which is the Jockey Club Oaks Invitational. And you're going to see a lot of names in here that you would see uh, over in Europe and then also some that have run out west as well. And... Uh, it, you're going to see the slight morning line favorite, 5-2. to two. Edisa going to get Flavian Prada born. When you, we saw Flavian taking the trip from west to east, we thought, well, who is he riding? There's got to be one horse that he's coming over here for. And it's not a horse that he's ridden before. This is a horse that's coming from French racing, finished a solid second last time out, and two back. I really like that performance to a horse named Madaya who actually went on to finish second to Deirdre. Now, Deirdre's one of those really good horses. Deirdre's actually a Japanese horse that's been running against the world's best, including Crystal Ocean, Magical, and Waldgeist, who are Europe's best horses at this type of distance. So I do think this is a deserved favorite. And if Flavian's coming over for this horse, you're going to be seeing a significant uh, horse being bet at the windows in Adisa. Yeah, and I'm going to use in the third spot. I, I actually went three, eight, one, and seven. Um, and you know, I, I've always liked Flavian. He went over the Belmont for the um, Belmont Stakes weekend, and actually ran very well in the turf course. But Lady Prance a lot for me. Joe Talmo also coming over for Richard Baltas, a horse that's going to be coming from way off the pace and lost to an absolutely very, very good horse. And in Cambier Park in the Del Mar Oaks, lost by a length and a quarter. So uh, I, I think the mile and an eighth is perfect. The mile and three eighths should not be an issue for this one. Lady Prancelot did win three starts back, beating a horse that I've been high on in Hostess uh, at Santa Anita. So I, I do like Lady Prance a lot in here. I like the nine to two price. And again, I think there's enough speed in here um, to set the race up. And I think one of the Euros is going to go. I think Prop Flavian's most likely going to come from farther off the pace. But I'll take Lady Prance a lot, a horse that I know can run at this distance and has raced against some very good horses. 
The number three, um, the number three, I had the number three on top. The number eight is Art of All Most for Roger Atfield. And I've always been a fan of Roger Atfield's horses up at Woodbine, the horse that ran well and that danced smartly, losing to Holy Helena and Starship Jubilee, came in third that day. Starship Jubilee came back and ran very well at Saratoga. The pucker up, the horse came from way off the pace at Arlington, came in third with Alan Garcia behind another very good Chad horse in Cafe Americano. Princess of Carolina is another good horse that won at Keeneland. So, Art of All Most at 5 to 1, I'll take for Roger Atfield. And then the one, as you said, Flavian Pratt coming in to ride this horse. First start in North America. A horse that's raced extremely well ever since breaking that maiden. Running well in some stakes company. To me, I'm going to use underneath, just because I think the price is a little bit short in here. Um, but is losing a couple pounds since coming <coughs> over. Has raced against some, uh, a good field of 8 and 7. So, uh, I'm going to use defensively. Uh, but in the third spot, I went three, eight, one, and seven. I went one, six, three, and five in here. I do like Adisa, the reasons that I talked about. Again, when you're taking a look at these Euros, and obviously you haven't had a chance to see all the races, go take a look at one or two of them just to see how they, the race is going to flow for them. Are they a horse that likes to be up front towards the, you know, the middle or towards the rear? Now, a lot of Europeans like to come from the back. They like to run really slow early and are really quick late. That's why they say that sort of European kick uh, as far as being able to run down the stretch. Now, Adisa, and, and again, when you're taking a look at these zeros, you want to take a look at horses that you personally know and how they've shaped up against them. So when I took a look at Adisa, I said, well, this horse finished second to Medea. What did Medea do? And then I saw she finished second to, to Deirdre, and Deirdre's a horse that's faced Crystal Ocean Magical and Waldgeist and actually held her own as well. So I think Adisa's can, can run in this spot. Obviously, Flavian coming over uh, will obviously sell me a little bit more in this spot. Now, the price is going to be a little bit short, but I do think she's a major contender in here, so I'll use her on top. The six, Wonderment, is a horse that uh, was able to break, the, the, break through in a Group 1 win back in October of 2018. But I actually like that third place performance as well before that Group 1 victory, finished third, beating a length and a half. To line of duty now line of duty uh, a lot of people remember winning the breeders cup juvenile turf last year again this is a horse that you want to take a look at uh, who he's faced and, and names you know and line of duty is a horse that we know because he raced in the breeders cup juvenile turf and won now in 2019 this horse has finished fourth sixth and seventh in some very big fields but it's been against much better competition so you get a little bit of class relief in here seven to two on the morning line uh, the, the the normal jockeys coming over from france and you like to see that, so I think Wonderment is a horse that you want to use as well. And then the three, your top choice, Sully, Lady Prancelot, is a horse that finished third last time, as you alluded to. And I just think she's another one. A stone-cold closer in this spot. There needs to be enough pace in here to set it up for her. And there's a lot of horses that like to come from the back. So I'm going to be interested to see how the pace develops in this spot. But nonetheless, Lady Prancelot, and you like to see Joe Talamo come over as well. So there's a lot of angles you could go in this spot. I had a 1, 6, 3, and 5. Your thoughts one more time? 8371. All right, let's take a look at the highlight on Saturday. It's going to be the Jockey Club Derby Invitational. $1 million online in here, and you're going to see the Morning Line favorite, Digital Age, going out for Chad Brown, coming off that second place performance in that Saratoga Derby Invitation to a Threat of Blue, who's also going to be in this race. Uh, ultimately, I had Digital Age in the mix. I threw out uh, a Threat of Blue which kind of worries me in this spot but again i landed on a euro that's going to be my play of the day for sure in this spot but what were your thoughts i went eight one three and nine um i i do like digital age i'm going to use the same horses that ran well in the saratoga derby a threat of blue just went wire to wire that day it's obviously capable of doing that again because this is a horse that's most likely going to get the lead and set slow fractions but digital age I just think a repeat of the Belmont Derby or the Saratoga Derby um, will definitely have this one in the winner's circle. Uh, the American Turf, I just keep thinking back to that race at Churchill, beat a very good horse, uh, very good horses in that field of 13, uh, beating a thread of blue that day, social paranoia, it was 8-1 to one that day, so Javier will be in the irons with I-Red being suspended for the first couple of racing days, I think it's a deserving favorite. The one is a thread of blue, and a winner of uh, last time out in the Saratoga Derby, the Penn Mile, I actually liked that the horse didn't get to the lead, losing the Moon Colony, uh, and then the Palm Beach going into the American Turf, went wire to wire that day, so a horse that I think is going to set slower fractions than last time out, and might be tough to catch on the front end. 
Uh, and then the three is Henley's Joy. I think, in fact, the Belmont will be big for the Maker Runner. The winner of the Belmont Derby, the Patine Ridge, ran well against Seismic Wave and Dream Charlie. Uh, Dream Charlie, a very good horse for Chad. Uh, and, and ran well against War of Will. In the Risen, they tried the Risen Star uh, against War of Will and then went uh, into the Transylvania at Keeneland as the favorite and came in second by half a length. So Henley Shaw, I think, in back to Belmont for really good connections in Bloom Racing. I think 5-1 to one is fair. Uh, but for me, I went 8-1, 3, and 9. I went 9, 4, 8, and 6 in this spot. And Spanish Mission is going to be my play of the day. Uh, this is going to be the horse that I single around in almost everything. I love this horse. You take a look at him. Uh, he was able to win... Break the maiden into the second career start and then started to progress a little bit more. Jamie Spencer, the normal rider, is coming over in this spot. He won a group three by four impressive lengths in a nine horse field. And that field was very, very good. They went on to do some nice things. Last time out, finished third beating a neck. A strong third, though, where the horse was sort of searching for room, had to angle out at the mile and a half distance. They're going to go on Saturday. And I like that performance. I think he's uh, ready to peak at this point. And they had a choice. They had a choice to run in the William Hill St. Ledger, which is a Group 1 event. But they said this horse is not the normal European horse that you're used to. A lot of Europeans like it soft or, or good or just a little bit moisture in the going. This horse likes it firm. So they thought coming over to America in this spot, they were hoping and fingers crossed that the hurricane doesn't hit Belmont on Friday or Saturday. Because if this comes up firm, this, it's, this is exactly what the horse wants. This is what the game plan was. Also, the owner's for Team Valor, Team Valor in here as well, are going to be able to watch the horse in person instead of watching on TV over in Europe. Now you take a look at that last third place performance and what horses have done since. The sixth place finisher came back to win a group three. The runner up that day came back uh, to finish a solid second in a group two. And the eighth place finisher in that race came back to finish second in a group three. So that race is extremely live. They said they're not really worried about the competition in here. They're just worried about the, the surface and if it's going to be firm or if it's going to be less than firm in this spot. The, the firmer, the better for Spanish Mission is a stone cold closer in this spot. It looks to be a horse that gets a decent pace set up in here. But I love this horse's closing kick. I'm going to use on top that Spanish Mission. Underneath the four, Pedro Cara uh, is looking for three in a row. Is light on class, but they're taking a shot in here. And I think 12 to 1 offers enough value for this horse who's a little bit unknown but coming over for some connections in France. And I just think this is a horse you may want to take a shot with. If you're not thrilled with the favorites, Digital Age and Spanish Mission, Pedro Carr is one you want to use who's been in rock solid form and will actually appreciate any rain that happens on Saturday, if so. Uh, then the eight in the third spot, Digital Age, coming off that second place performer, just seems to be there each and every time. Three for five as far as wins goes, four for five in the money. And again, had a really solid second last time when they didn't really go that fast. The third of blue was able to dictate the fractions that day. But nonetheless, I think Digital Age is a huge competitor here and there. Yeah, at five to two on the morning line, I'll throw him in the third spot. And then Tone Broke. Tone Broke's a horse that was two for three as far as the Canadian Triple Crown goes. And he tried the turf for the first time last time out. And he was able to win that race. That was a $400,000 race in the Breeders' Uh, stakes up at Woodbine, and I thought it was a good enough effort. They're taking a shot in here. Why not? At 10 to 1, Johnny V's going to be aboard. He's the one you might not throw in as a price as well. So for me, in the Jockey Club at Derby Invitational, I had at 9, 4, 8, and 6. Your thoughts one more time? Uh, I went 8, 1, 3, 9. All right, that's going to wrap things up for us on this edition of the Stakes Preview. Fun to be back at it. Obviously, we were going through Saratoga. Uh, a really good weekend coming up here of horse racing. Now we sort of lead up to the Breeders' Cup and all the prep races that are going to happen as well. Keelan's going to open. Churchill's going to open. There's a lot to look forward to in the fall. Any more thoughts before uh, we leave? It's just a, a very good card and I, I know a lot of people, you know, myself included, kind of want to take a break at the Saratoga, but it's kind of hard to ignore these very good cards down in New York and then Kentucky Downs where the, the prices come home a lot. So, um, and I think Kentucky Downs card's very good and obviously Belmont's card's very good and Reminder that there is adjusted post times during the week for Belmont for the time being at 3 o'clock post for Belmont. So if you like playing Belmont during the week, they run eight races uh, the weekday starting at 3 o'clock. Yeah, that's definitely worth noting. Uh, three 3 o'clock post Wednesday through Friday, and then they'll have their normal 1 o'clock post on the weekends. And again, you kind of alluded to it. You, you talked about wanting to take a break, but being diehard, right. diehard racing fans, right? We always say we're going to take a break. And then we look at the, the sheets and we're like, ooh, look who's running. Oh, mm -hmm. we got to play this horse. So mm -hmm. while a lot of people like to take a break, uh, when you just start to see these horses, you just start to fall in love again. That's the best part of the game. 
is just seeing these horses that you know maybe you knew from a week ago a couple weeks ago or something like that that are running back and you get the odds that you want so hopefully we gave you some good information for this weekend so uh, maybe it turns into some uh lucky lucky money on this upcoming weekend so uh for Sully Crowdy and myself till we see you again take care